Let's see, there's a few new shows that I'm working on uh, as a voice actor. I uh, don't think I can, because the casting hasn't been announced yet. But, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of it. Is there anything? Huh? Yeah, that camera. And everyone's doing this. Like, immediately, like, I have to post this panel! Um, I, I can't think of anything that I can talk about on hand. Um, I'll throw hints out. There are um, a series that Funimation recently released has a follow-up film, and I did not work on the series, but I directed the film. So, do some math and some calculations and figure that one out, uh, and it was fun. Um, beyond Lots of One Piece stuff. <clears throat> Still working on lots of One Piece. Um, it never ends. Yeah, it doesn't. There's like 800 something episodes. Currently, there's just under 600. But uh, <laughs> being that we're working on like, you know, up to about 300, we're halfway through of what exists, and what exists is halfway of what's in the author's mind. <laughs> yes. I think I think it's gonna hit a thousand. I think One Piece is gonna hit a thousand episodes, and I have my own version of the ending of One Piece. You guys want to hear? Yes. This is what I think happens at the end of One Piece. Luffy and the Straw Hats, and however many Straw Hats they have by that point, like twelve Straw Hats by that point, uh, they find the end of the Grand Line, and it actually is like an island with a, a treasure chest. Right, that uh, Goldie Roger put there. They open it up, they dig the treasure chest up, they open it up, and there's a big red button in it. And Luffy's like, hey, what does this do? And pushes it, and then the first episode starts over again. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone in Japan riots and burns down buildings. <laughs> Man, everyone would hate that so. I'm dropped! <laughs> Years of my life. Um, but outside of that, I can't think of much else. I'm working on a few other games. It's mostly DLC content to games that already exist. I continue to work on some Borderlands stuff from time to time. Mm. Yes! Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, are there any, as a director, are there any productions that were particularly difficult? Particularly difficult. Um, yeah, there are a lot. I mean, each thing has its own challenges, right? So, with um, most shows, it's finding the balance between getting good performance and overdoing it. Um, with lots of anime, lots of anime is very melodramatic with it, it's drawn and the way the music is presented, stuff like that. So if you do a completely realistic performance, it sounds boring. It sounds like you are not trying hard enough. But, but it's like really, you know, someone could be doing a fantastic job, but if on screen is and you're not as big as that person, or as big as that what that character is doing, then it sounds like you're asleep. So finding that nice, pushing everything beyond reality level of melodrama without it being ridiculous is a nice balance, and that's a challenge. Um, sometimes addressing the way uh, a show is going to go tonally is a challenge, like uh, Italian, trying to find the nice middle ground of this is obviously a comedy, and there's obviously some offensive stuff in it. How far do we want to go down that path? With that, how close do we want to stick with the translation or the jokes versus the historical content? How is all this going to play out? You know, finding all those sorts of paths that can be a difficult task. Um, the casting, you know. Um, there could be someone who would be perfect for the part, but if they've been perfect for that type of part, 20 times in the past 10 years, you know, they're really perfect for that part because someone would be like, I'm tired of hearing this person. But the flip side of the argument could be, but they're a billion times better at that type of role than anyone you can throw up there. So where where do we draw the line with that type of thing? There are all sorts of different challenges you face.
days, I wouldn't say any one more than another it was more difficult. They all have different types of difficulties. Yes! Um, it kind of depends, um, because I don't know, it's, it's, it depends on how you want to approach it. Like, I don't always think it's fair to judge actors, uh, voice actors that way, because we don't judge on camera actors that way ever. You know, we don't go into a movie uh, with, uh, I don't know, let's say, uh, Brad Pitt, like, oh, I can't watch this anymore. I have to think of him as in Seven. Or I could just think of him in Fight Club. I can't see it as anyone else. Oh, every line sounds like that guy from Fight Club. People don't do that. They're just like, oh, cool, it's Brad Pitt. I like him. Let's go see his movie. But the voice actors are like, oh, it's that guy again. It always sounds the same. But, so it's not always like, I think it's an unfair thing to be judged on. Um, especially with anime where you're not called on to be Mel Blanc a lot. Like, it's not that type of character performance over and over where it's huge and broad. Um, but there is something to be said for it where you like, you know, you hear, you heard someone as the lead in some series for 100 episodes, 200 episodes, and they, um, you know, you are 100% invested in that type of voice, and then you hear that same voice on some other show. It is hard to break it. Um, it ties in with the answer to that last question I had. The problems I have with that, the challenges I face with that are, what is the right choice? Because that voice coming out of that character sounds right, but there's also the aspect of people are so used to hearing that voice come out of some other character that uh, it might throw them off or pull them out of the show. But my second, you know, my second place choice for that character is not as good. Um, how do I approach that sort of thing? Like, what's the challenge with that? Uh, what I frequently do with with actors like that where their voice is so super, super recognizable is I try to rotate them out, you know. Uh, you will be the lead in this show for a while. I like working with you. Come in and audition for me again. Um, I may have you as a supporting cast member on some other show and give it a little bit of a break before you're the lead again in something. It's not like we sit around and like, you know, make them take turns. But for me, I, I tend to do that. Like, uh, you know. Vic hasn't worked with me uh, as the lead in anything except for Full Metal Alchemist, but he was, you know, great in that. He was fantastic in Full Metal Alchemist, but I also haven't had a show that really suits his voice for anything else that I've worked on in some time. Uh, he's been in One Piece from time to time, and maybe in it again, but, um, you know, I think the closest thing I would have had was, uh, he did audition for Eden at the East, but I didn't have anything for him. That. Yes! <laughs> Strangest thing. I don't know. There's um, uh, let's see. There's weird stuff to sign. You know, signing flesh. I've signed babies before. <laughs> I think that's weird. Sign a baby's head. Um, let's see. Sign casts. Sign electronics that were probably several hundred dollars. Um. I had my face licked once. Uh, yeah, so that's up too. Uh, someone was having me sign something and they were very meek and uh, quiet. Sure. Uh, what's up? What? They told me to come here, so I was like, you know, trying to listen in to what they were saying. And when I do that, I never look at them. I kind of let, you know, look off to the side and just listen up. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be lick on the side of my face. Like, ah, oh, that's not cool. Um, what else? That's most of it. Signing babies and licking. <laughs> That's plenty weird, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how much of a say you had in the matter. Okay. I know that a lot of different cast members have covered Dragon Soul for Kai. Yeah. And do you know if there's a possibility of having like an octet or a marathon song instead of Instead of one, like use little bits of other ones that are having to come in. I'm sure it's possible. Um, I didn't have anything to do with that production. Um, I think at one point I was going to be one of the singers, and it just turned out that uh, 
Like, here, try this. Cool, I'm ready. Oh, uh, we forgot to be asked you. We got it done over here now. Okay. So, not me. Um, uh, so maybe I'll sing some other one in the future. As far as like mixing that up, I think that's a cool idea. I think I know that it's been talked about before, so it's not the first time the ideas, uh, ideas come up. So it's a good idea. We'll see if it happens. Mm, yes. <laughs> No, um, I wasn't, but I mean, I like that kind of show. Like, it takes you until about, the show itself is only, what, like 11 episodes, 12 episodes, something like that? It takes you to about episode 5 and you go like, ah, this is what's going on in the back half is uh, continuing that plot line. I like that. I don't want to know everything by like the second or third episode. Um, as far as being confused, no more so than what was intended, you know, the, the um, creators threw out hints here and there of what was going to happen, and as, you know, especially when you watch through the second or third time, like, oh wow, oh this, oh that, and you see more things knowing what the outcome is going to be. But it's like that with anything, with any movie you could watch that uh, is sort of like a mystery thriller, figuring things out type of film. So. No more confused than what's intended. Yes! If you didn't do voice work, what would you do? I don't know. Um, failed rock star. Um, um, I still like, I like directing and producing enough to where if um, I was never cast as anything again, I would still take a lot of pleasure and fun. And fulfilled in just that aspect of it. Um, but if I was going to completely not do this type of work at all, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've invested so much of my life into acting, and performing, and producing, and directing that I'm not sure what I would do. I'd have to take a big piece of like life, ginger, and clear the palace to figure something out. Because I have, you know, I don't know what would happen. It'd be one be horrible to have that forced on me and find out. I think the initial thing is be a, I would be a waiter until I would figure out how, what I was going to do so I could have some money coming in. That's a, uh, that's an easy, not easy, it's a, a good way to make a decent amount of money with the skill set of just being friendly and quick. You do, you do great work as is. So thank you. Enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Mm, yes. Do you ever use your voice for evil? Do you ever go around and like constantly? <laughs> like, do I ever do what? Do you like go around and mess with people's heads? Not with the voice. I mess with people's heads because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't do a lot of I don't do a lot of uh, voice trickery uh, with my voice uh, unless it's like you know wandering around in the dark and you know say something creepy. Um, Monica Rial, I know will mess with the telemarketers when they call her. She'll pretend that she's a little girl, you know, because she sounds like one anyway. Like, they'll ask her if her, if her mommy's on one. No, I'll hear about she's myself. She's the one who's dressed up by skin, like some little green with the silver hair. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that to freak them out at the other end of the line. I mean, with Grandpa, he's in the top, he's not saying anything. You know, it's horrible stuff. <laughs> because Monica's evil. That's what she's... <laughs> Mm -hmm. I haven't. Um, I know, uh, I think Tatum, I used to joke about Tatum ordering a drive through his inner room. Um, I don't know if he's done it or not. But <laughs> yeah, it's large fry. Um, uh, but I have So, no. I know some voice actors. Uh, that have decided upon entering uh, a restaurant or a, you know, where, where they're out shopping, they're like, okay, the entire time that I'm here, I'm going to be from Australia. And they try to do that. Or I'm going to try, you know, pull off an English accent the entire time that I'm here. I don't do that because I want to just relax and not put so much effort into having my lunch. I just want to eat. Anyone? Yes. 
some of the most fulfilling parts of each of my jobs. Um, for voice acting, uh, it's very fulfilling to pull off a nice performance despite the fact that the original animation and performance was done in another language. If you can make it look and sound like it was intended to be in English from the beginning, like everything fits perfectly and sounds great and it fits the content, that's a very cool feeling. Uh, rather than like forcing something out, like, well, we have to say it this way because this this must happen on this line because then everyone goes, oh. so we have to squeeze out this information in this line. So if you can make it sound like that was the way it was supposed to be delivered to begin with, like it was drawn that way just for you, that's great. That's a very fulfilling feeling. As a director, it's fun to get that out of someone. You know, it's very fulfilling to get really honest, great performances out of people. Um, because of those same challenges. It wasn't written in English to begin with. Um, so being able to pull it off where it sounds authentic and genuine and like it was made to be in English to begin with is really cool. Um, as a producer, I think the uh, mix process is probably the most rewarding uh, aspect of that job. When we go through and decide what it's going to sound like, you know, how much up front are the, is the dialogue going to be? Are we going to spread it out from the center channel to the left and right? Are we even going to use the rear channels for dialogue if someone's coming up from behind or something? Uh, how much are we going to use the subwoofer uh, low frequency track for explosions? Or are we going to do a, a Batman and have a subwoofer track when someone talks? Which is kind of weird. Um, or when a plane flies over, you know, how much of an aspect shift are we going to have? Like start over here, come to the center channel, and leave over there, and have a thunder by with a subwoofer track. Like figuring out all those sorts of things are super fun to me. Um, uh, writing, really the only uh, uh, fulfilling thing is pushing send when it's done. Like, oh, finished it. Oh, good. Oh, that's nice. Very tedious work, and it's solo work. Um, I like it because I like having scripts that I work with, you know, and knowing that they're going to, everything's going to fit and flow well, especially on a show that I'm directing. What I don't like about it is, uh, it's a solo game. I like being around other people. You know, I like working with other actors and working with other engineers and producers and directors and having conversations and, you know, FaceTime. Uh, writing is me and a laptop and, you know, a video monitor. All night, you know, by myself. Um, or with my dog, going, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> um, so sending that off is the most, uh, as a complete, is the most fulfilling aspect of that job. A couple more questions, and then I will sign all the things. Yes. Have you played any of the video games you work with? Yes. Uh, I'm not a big gamer because it takes up a lot of time. That used to be my main drive to buy a game is like the longer it would take to finish it, the more of a you know of an investment like worth my money it is. But now it's completely reverse of that. Now I want to play things like Street Fighter X Tekken where I can play it for five minutes and then cut it off. And not play it like, oh my god, the sun's coming up. I never want that feeling ever again on a game. Ever. Because that means that, that next day after the sun came up, that same day, that day's going to suck. Um, but yeah, uh, anything where I have like a you know a decent sized role in, or it was a lot of fun to record. Like my role in Borderlands Two is is not very big, but that was so much fun. And every time I hear you know I would hear a clip in the you know this game's coming out here, the game trailers, I'm like that sounds awesome. You know I picked that one up, um, and I haven't done it yet, uh, but I want to pick up that uh, the Walking Dead Survival Instinct game because I'm in that one too. I play a couple of different roles, and I think that it's so neat that I got to be in it with uh, Norman Reedus and uh, some of the stars of the show because I'm a super big geeky fan of that show. I'm like, yay, I'm in it. So even if I'm like, oh, I have one line, that was me, you know? <laughs> I'm the walking dead, holy crap, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. There's not really a one pathway to do it. Uh, any of these jobs, like Kyle was up here earlier, Kyle's path was different than mine. Kyle was a radio DJ, and that was his you know, voice experience. Um, for directing, 
some of the directors that I've worked with are actually engineers that used to sit in this chair and do, sitting in that chair over and over for years and years and years. They got used to how that job worked and they had an opportunity to become a director. So they know the technical aspect of it. They know how to communicate with actors because they've heard someone else do it for several years. I took directing courses in college for theatrical directing, for stage direction. Um, and I also am part of a improv sketch comedy troupe uh, called Section 8. And we played in Los Angeles and we've won some awards and done some other stuff. And I, whenever I, with that group of people, whenever we, someone has a sketch idea, um, you were the director of that. So, you know, I had years and years of working on that. Uh, so experience is the best teacher and then if you can find some sort of scholastic way to train, I would highly suggest that. Even if you're like, well, I want to direct voices. Learn to direct actors. Learn to direct on stage. Learn to direct in any capacity. Yes. Are there any animated actors All of them. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I don't watch what's coming straight out of Japan anymore. I mean, I did that for a very, very brief period of time. But what I found is, you know, a I have enough to work on currently with what's in front of me. Uh, where I would need like more hours in the day to investigate what could be coming down the pipe. B, which is the important thing, I don't want to get my heart set on something when there's only a, a, this much of a possibility that I get to work on it. You know, like I've, I've done a lot of work with Funimation and I've directed with uh, a, a couple of other companies here and there as well. And Funimation is super kind to me as far as what I get to work on. If I really, really want to work on something and I have enough advance notice about it, I'm like, please let me squeeze in the, you know, like, like Eden of the East, for instance. I knew that was coming down the pipe. I'm like, please let me work on this show. I think it's awesome. I'll work on Eden of the East. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, you have this, this, and this, and this. If you finish this much Optimus by then, you can do it. Sweet. Now I know. I have six weeks to make that happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to get my heart set on something and then have it not happen. But as far as just general, broad things to work on, um, I would love to work on uh, a Miyazaki film at some point. Um, I'm super stoked that I got to work on uh, a Hosoda film, and I would love to keep working on all of Hosoda's films because I think they're beautiful. Um, I wish uh, Satoshi Kon was still with us because I would love to work on anything that he did because he's a genius. Um, uh, I still like, um, especially because Eden of the East and, uh, and a fan of the standalone complex, I would love to work on anything Kenji Kamiyama does too. I mean, he's really, he's a cool guy, cool, cool guy as well. Dress is awesome. <laughs> all right, I'll take one more question and then we'll sign all the things. People Aquarium. <laughs> yes. Um, my first anime role was in fact, um, it was for a Dragon Ball movie, and I was cast as two or three things at the same time. One was Master Roshi, that was like the, one of the first jobs I ever got, which is cool because I still do that job all the time. It's not uh, always that way for acting. Um, Count Lucifer, who's obviously a good guy with that name. <laughs> and then Army Commander, which is just a big, you know, red troll. Thing. Um, those were all fun, um, and it was a fun challenge, and I was super psyched uh, and excited to be in the booth doing that and having that job. I was so crazy excited about it. Uh, and I'm still excited every, day, every time when I go in to work on some new project. It's just, uh, I'm really, really lucky and very fortunate, very blessed to be able to go to some sort of job that I really enjoy every day. I don't, you know, I don't work because I have to, you know, like, well, I've got to pay all these bills and blah, blah, blah. I love going to work. I love my jobs. I'm so lucky. I'm so fortunate. Um, and I know that. I, I don't feel like um, I've done all these things and I deserve blah, 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 blah. No. I am so very lucky and fortunate to be in doing anything like this. You know, part of that's you guys being able to um, support things like that. So I very much appreciate it. Um, but I forgot where I was going with all of that. Oh, the conventions. Okay, that was my first, uh, my first job was recording. The conventions. Um, I had a weird 
set of circumstances, I guess, with the first couple of conventions I went to, because I think initially there was a, a company called Score who made those collectible Dragon Ball Z cards, like those card games, and they would take us out to conventions rather than the conventions actually bring us out. So we would go there and show up and just sign stuff and be done, rather than like do what I'm doing now, which I, is much more. This is much more fun for me. Uh, I love signing stuff, but I'd rather answer questions and you know hear what you guys have to say and what you want to know about. Um, so that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it was that was when I found out, and this is like early 2000s, because um, I had no idea. I was like, oh cool, I'm working on anime. That was when I also found out that there are people who don't like English voice actors or English voice acting in general, and they think that we are poo pooing all over anime. Um, I, that blew my mind. I'm like, how, why do you think that? You know? Uh, and then the, the more I work in the business, I'm like, oh, because they've seen all this stuff and someone didn't try at all. It's crappy, you know? So that's been another thing that I always keep in mind is um, when I'm working on something, it didn't always used to be. Like, I consider a lot of what I work on either through myself or whatever else, like, I know that I try and I know that I do my research and I know I do my best on it. And when I watch it, as someone who is a viewer, I really like it. Like, I'm not going to let it go away if I don't like it. You know, I have to, like, oh, this is all great. Everyone's performances are great. It's not just I'm running out of time. I'm like, I will ask for more time. I'm like, this is not good. I want to fix this. I want it to be really good. Because as a viewer, I want to be able to sit back and watch it go, that's fantastic. And I want you guys to have the same thing. So whenever I'm working on something, I recall that it didn't, didn't use uh, used to always be fantastic. And it could just be that I'm kidding myself and that I think it's fantastic. But I, a, a lot of what I work on, um, you know, once again, either as a director or being as a part of someone else's stuff, it's way, 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 way better than 1995. You know, you watch some of that stuff and it's just, oh, no wonder people hate the English dubs. These are crap. You know, and they weren't all that way. There was always some good ones here and there, but probably from like, 98 or 99 when Cowboy Bebop came out. From that point on forward, everyone's like, oh, we have to try. And people said, hey, you know what? Boom, beat that. And so everyone's been trying to since then. Um, and whether or not you think people have achieved that, that's up to you. But like, there's been a benchmark, and Mary McGlynn and, and her crew, people threw that down in 99. It's like, anime can be this good. You know, a dumb anime product can be this good. So, top back. And everyone's trying to. So. Yay, Mary McGlynn, for forcing everyone to do better. But with that, it is just about 12.30, and uh, I'd be more than happy to sit here and sign all of your things. Uh, it looked like for Kyle, they had everyone line up here. That seems like it's a good idea. So right up over her, and I'll be happy to sign stuff. I think there's something else in here, too, but it's with Kyle, and I think I'm going to do that as well. So uh, there's no hurry, guys. We'll just take care of everything you need. Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. We rise mag.com.